A new law that restores voting rights to thousands of convicted felons is now being challenged in court. I'm actually surprised it took so long. Uh, maybe they were waiting just for the, for the right moment, but it's not surprising to me. DFL Representative Cedric Frazier of New Hope was chief author of the bill. Prior to this year, convicted felons released from prison were not allowed to vote if they were still on probation or parole. The law restores voting rights to an estimated 55,000 Minnesotans. However, the group Minnesota Voters Alliance argues that the state constitution doesn't give the legislature the authority to restore those rights. In their view, felons need to complete their entire sentence. Representative Frazier is confident the lawsuit won't hold up. What's frustrating, though, and what's concerning and should be concerning to all Minnesotans is that we have organizations like this that are pushing, um, pushing, this legis pushing this lawsuit to confuse and create fear for folks. And really, I believe the ultimate outcome is to suppress the vote. The lawsuit contends that if the legislature wants to change the Constitution, they can do so by having voters decide on a constitutional amendment. The average cost to buy a home in the Twin Cities has dropped in the past year, but that doesn't mean buyers are seeing drastically reduced prices. This weekend, reporter Kevin Miller gives us a summer update on the local housing market. Spring market is usually the best. Summer is good, but it's not uncommon to have a little bit of a summer slowdown. Although the weather may be hot, the housing market is cooler now than it was a year ago, but not by much. You talk to some of the buyers right now and tell them that things are slowing down, they'll think you're nuts uh, because they've put in five, six offers and can't get a house. Across the Twin Cities, homes are selling for less than they did in 2022, but prices are still up significantly from a few years ago. On average, homes are selling for 101% of the list price. In Brooklyn Park, the median sale price dropped around 7% since last May. People are out there looking, they're anxious when something comes up that looks like it might fit, they're anxious to get out and see it. Fewer homes are being listed on the market. We have seen some sellers may be staying put a little bit longer because there is an adjustment to the interest rate that they had seen for a couple of years. In Brooklyn Park, there were 97 new listings this May. Last year, there were 150. I think what we're running into right now is the person who's getting ready to, that's in a house right now that's getting ready to sell really wants to see another house that is going to make the move worthwhile. Metro-wide houses are spending more time on the market before they sell. The houses that are really in good shape don't have the deferred maintenance. They're just selling really quickly. But with fixer-uppers? They're maybe taking a harder look at whether or not that house makes sense for them. Overall, it's still a seller's market. If you're a buyer, I would not hold off. I would look. I'd be prepared as much as possible. If you like the house, the odds are still really good that somebody else is going to like it. In Brooklyn Park, Kevin Miller, CCX News. A program that began in the midst of the pandemic now brings essential health and other services to hundreds of residents of Brooklyn Park each month. As Rusty Ray reports, it's a health clinic on wheels. Inside this blue building on wheels, Carmen Bibiano doesn't bother setting up anything permanent. So then here's the, the dental chair and all of the equipment. So then they bring their extension. I also, if they don't bring one, I also have them. So I try to be prepared for them, make everything easier because it is already enough or too much that they are right. coming here and they right. are providing the free services for the community. Bibiano runs Brooklyn Park's Health on the Go, a mobile wellness clinic that started as a way to get COVID vaccines into the underserved apartment communities in the state's sixth largest city. But then I started asking, okay, you don't want the COVID vaccine, that's fine. But what else do you want me to bring you? Because I know the organizations, I can bring you other health uh, resources. Lots of other resources. There's legal services, housing, uh, food. Um, I cannot solve all of the problems, but I can guarantee that those, those programs and services are gonna be free for them because that's my job, to provide free services. All available wherever the blue trailer can go as a billboard for the city. I see the health on the glass as an opportunity for uh, the city to be known in the community because that's what residents ask, like, uh, when are you coming next month? When are you coming next month? And she uses every inch of the space she can. So here is the the kitchen, but it is not actually the kitchen. Every community connection she can. Sometimes they give me ideas and, and I'm just thinking and, and I'm like, okay, yes. But then it's like more work for me. But I'm like, okay, well, uh, anyway, it's gonna be, it's gonna be worth it. 
because um, the community is going to get what they need, what they really want. All to bring more of what's possible to those in impossible situations. Trying to make the lives of the residents a little bit easier because it is very complicated. A lot of them, they live in very difficult situations like domestic violence, uh, sexual assault and everything. Um, maybe they, they don't have a job. So then uh, when the health on the go comes, uh, is like resources are going to be there for them. And that is Rusty Ray reporting. Health on the Go visits Huntington and Eden Park apartment complexes every month and distributes food at Hennepin Tech once a month as well. A Robbinsdale teen's dress creation could land her a $10,000 scholarship and some artistic fame thanks to rolls and rolls of duct tape. Take a look. This is Ava Model's creation, and yes, it was inspired by Van Gogh's masterpiece, The Starry Night. Her creation took 23 rolls of duct tape and 227 hours of work. She even made matching heels and handbag accessory. Ava is one of 10 finalists for the Stuck at Prom Scholarship Contest. Voting runs through July 12th, and you can vote for Ava on our website, ccxmedia.org. Staying on top of your blood pressure is as simple as these four easy steps. Self-monitoring is power. We had some outstanding athletes in high school sports in the northwest suburbs this past school year. Today a look back at one of our favorite CCX Sports Spotlight stories from this spring. After a breakout season last spring, Maple Grove senior sprinter Jordan Borsch is picking up where she left off. Borsch has excelled this season, including a trifecta at the Hamlin Elite Meet, where she won the 100, 200, and 400 meter races. Yeah, the season's gone well so far. I mean, the Elite Meet was a lot of fun. I ran good times there, and um, I think that was a good mark for me to see where I was so far in the season, and I was happy with my times, and I hope that sections in, at state, uh, I'll continue to improve. One of those athletes that just comes around once in, in a lifetime, right? Um, literally, when you look at her times, like it's, it's a once in a lifetime kid. As coaches, we sit back and enjoy those moments and watching her sprint as much as anybody else in the stadium. And um, it's, fun to, it's fun to watch in a stadium when everything goes silent and quiet because they know she's about to run. As a junior last season, Borsch, who wasn't one of the more well-known sprinters coming into the season, won the 100 and 400 at the state class 3A meet and placed third in the 200. Yeah, I was so excited. I mean, I really, really, really wanted to win the 400. And I did that, and then I also won the 100, which I wasn't expecting to do that. So that was um, a nice compliment. She was a dark, nobody talked about her. Nobody, there wasn't any conversation because last year's senior class was so good. You know, if you look at that final of the 100 last year at State, they are, they're all running in college. They're all doing college athletics right now. That was an incredible class last year of senior sprinters. And so it made sense that Jordan, there wasn't, nobody was talking about her, but she knew it was possible. Part of what makes Jordan's success so impressive, she's somewhat of a beginner in the sport. She didn't come out for track until 10th grade. Yeah, I played uh, soccer and hockey and I was like, was one of the quickest people. So I knew that I had a gift and I guess it took me some years to find my way to the track, but I'm glad I did. Well, I'd say I've always been a quick person, but the past couple of years I knew that I wanted to be really good and work hard. So I think training, a combination of training and um, just the way I am has helped me. The three races she is focusing on, the 100, 200, and 400, have their differences. Yeah, I mean, the 100, a lot of it for me is just working on my starts. That's probably um, my, weak, my weakest point. Um, my top end speed is what helps me finish the 100. And then the 200, uh, it's a little bit longer, so I have more time to make up um, my, for my poor starts. <laughs> And then the 400, uh, I know I have like the speed and the endurance, so I feel like it's really like the perfect distance for me. Earlier this month, Borsch took part in the Athena Awards ceremony. She was chosen as Maple Grove's Athena winner as top senior female athlete at the school. 
It was a lot of fun. I mean, I liked being around so many young women who were highly accomplished and smart and athletic. And it was really um, inspiring to see other people like myself and see what they're going to do and what they already have done. With a bright future ahead of her, Jordan's headed to South Bend, Indiana next year to run track for Notre Dame. Yeah, I'm really excited for Notre Dame. I mean, they're a great school academically. I'll be studying finance. They have a really good track team, and when I was on my visit, I just really liked the team. But first things first, Jordan Borsch will take aim at trying to sweep the 100, 200, and 400 meters at the state meet. That's not easy to do. Very few people have ever done that because it takes, um, it takes the speed and the endurance and all the above, and it's a hard turnaround to do prelims and finals and in all those races and, and go one, two, three in, in, in a June hot day. It's really hard to do that. Um, she's capable of it. Jordan did go on to sweep the 100, 200, and 400 meter races at the state meet to complete a spectacular season. Best of luck to her in her college career. That's it for sports. Thanks for watching CCX. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.